Hello and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me as I forget the second part of the intro. Uh, I am feeling a bit better, still not quite 100%, so I'm going to get some more rest today, but hopefully I should be better by tomorrow. And uh, what we're doing today is, well, we're going to do a couple things. First off, I read the comments from last episode and uh, someone had a really great idea to spend a little bit of time going over power armor layouts because... Uh, they mentioned, and, and I would agree, that I haven't really seen any tutorials or, or parts and tutorials that go over power armor setups and disadvantages and advantages. And I actually see quite a few questions about this. I've seen numerous questions on the subreddit and such about, like, what's the ideal layout and all that. So I want to go over that briefly here. And then we're going to work on expanding a few things in the base. And I'm starting research-wise to kind of head towards the rocket. We need to get these rocket shooting speed reach researches. And then we can research the rocket because... Uh, the, the plan here is to get the rocket, launch a couple rockets to get some space science so we can do a few researches I'd like to do, uh, and then start really expanding the base and, and going towards, you know, that high science pack per minute count and going into these bigger builds and such. Uh, but I, I think we need to launch a, a few rockets first. And actually, just kind of as a lead-in from that uh, is another short thing to discuss is that I've experienced, and uh, just also as, as tips to newer, newer players who want to try to do this, I find that transitioning from your, your like, I, I don't even know if I'd call this a starter base, but a starter or mid-sized base, uh, transitioning from that to try to go to like a mega base too early, I think is really detrimental. Uh, I've I've played in many games, and even my last game, my sending support us to space game, I kind of made a mistake of doing that, is I was impatient, and I just transitioned way too quick, and it actually made things a lot worse, because, you know, it uh, I, I didn't have enough resources to actually build the mega base, so I was in this really weird transition stage, and, uh, and I think just kind of waiting until you know you have enough resources and stuff built up to do it is just a much better route. Uh, so that is why we're taking a little bit longer to do it just because, you know, I, I have experienced that before and <laughs> found it to not be great. But anyway, on to the power armor. So uh, last time we had an awesome combat episode, which was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. But someone uh, had mentioned that, like, I used three fusion reactors instead of two. And this is, well, mostly this was just due to my situation last episode is that I didn't really have the resources at the moment to make Mark II batteries, uh, so I wanted the extra power from the fusion reactor. But there's uh, there's many different ways you can lay out your power armor Mark II. We're going to go over just the Mark II, because like I said before, the Mark I doesn't really have enough space to do much with. But uh, most people, I think, actually tend to use two reactors. And the reason for this is because two reactors is still quite a bit of power, and it, it allows them to fit just more stuff in here. Uh, and then also on top of that is once you do get Mark II batteries and can just make them, I mean, we have the ability to make them. Uh, I just didn't really have the resources and time last, last episode. But uh, if you can make those, those can kind of make up for the missing fusion reactor. Because if, you know, if you give them time to charge when you're not like using uh, robo ports or you're not fighting a lot or something, the, the Mark II batteries will charge up and they hold so much energy that... Uh, that it allows you know them to kind of compensate and empower things even if the two fusion reactors can't. So, like a layout that uh, a lot of people I play with use is uh, they will actually use like five or six exoskeletons. So I'm not going to make all of them right now, but they would do like two fusions, exo exo, and uh, three more exos here. That would be five. And then if they want another one, they would even put one up here for six exoskeletons. And then maybe like a shield or two down here and then like a night vision and then just fill the rest with uh, batteries, Mark II. And that's kind of like a getting around uh, type of suit. And you're really fast with these exoskeletons because like I said, they stack and it's not diminishing returns. Like each one is just a plus 30% movement speed. Uh, now, obviously there's not any row ports in this layout. So maybe you would do like five exoskeletons uh, and then a bunch of Mark II batteries, uh, night vision, and then up where these sh uh, shields are, do like two Mark II RoboPorts. Because the Mark II RoboPorts, which we haven't actually unlocked yet, uh, let me find them for you here though. Uh, if we can, RoboPort, here we go. Uh, this one supports 25 robots, so two of them is going to be 50 robots, and that's eight charging stations, and the construction area is much larger as well. Uh, you know, some people prefer just like, 
super crazy build suits and I have used them before where you have like four or five of these. Uh, but just for like kind of doing like stuff around the base or maybe building some rails or something, uh, you know, two would probably be sufficient. Uh, but if you do want like a really good build suit, then I would still say two fusion reactors, a bunch of Mark II batteries, and then just maybe like three or four Exos, and then the rest uh, just the Mark II uh, personal roboports. So to clarify, I was using three last time. Uh, normally three, I think, is quite overkill, and you're actually better off in terms of space usage and stuff to do two and then batteries. It's just that, that I didn't really have the ability to make all those Mark II batteries last episode. So that's kind of just a basic breakdown. Uh, there are other modules for these, like the... Uh, the what you calls it the the discharge defense i don't remember the name because i think it's a terrible item which i never use uh but the discharge defense this was just like god awful like everyone would have agreed this was just terrible uh quite a while ago but they did update it so that this is better it, it it's really good in like specific situations but i've never really found it to be that good because uh, it does damage but the main reason uh people who do like it like it is that uh, it pushes back and stuns enemies. So this is really good if you if you are going on a combat run, uh, like on foot, and, and you do get surrounded, this will kind of uh, help you with that because you can have this and then you have your, your remote, your trigger, and that will, uh, that will like push them back, right? That'll stun them and push them back so you can run away. Um, so it's definitely really good in cases like that. I never really find myself in positions like that, so I find it just not useful. It The damage it does is just not worth it. So... Like if you want it just for damage, uh, I would definitely pick up just like another laser defense or something instead. Uh, but the pushback and stun can be really nice. Okay, so there's that. Uh, just wanted to go over that. I hope that kind of gave you guys a better idea. Uh, I am going to leave my row ports out for now because I'm not really wanting them to build random stuff. Uh, but I'm just checking our lines here. It looks like red circuits are actually our bottleneck again. Uh, it's probably these modules in all honesty. I want to actually see how many we have here. Uh, we have currently 27. That's actually way more than I wanted to make. <laughs> oh dear, this is what happens when you don't put the correct conditions on your stuff. All right, so we have that. All kind of other random stuff in here. Uh, but also looking at our nuclear, as I did check, and uh, we, we have quite a lot. We Both these are now running, and I did fix, uh, I had like broke this one in the same way I broke this one where I took extra pieces out. I fixed that up, uh, but we now have 102 stocked up in here, which is really good. I mean, that's like, that's more fuel cells than we're going to need for like probably 60 hours or something. It's, it's a ton of fuel. This is over a thousand fuel cells right here if we turned it all into that. Uh, but we're just going to keep letting these run. I mean, it's free, uh, you know. We get that extra one essentially for free at the cost of this, which we have tons of. In fact, this chest is almost full. Uh, but those are going to keep running. So just a quick update on that. This will shut down at some point, and the red circuit should hopefully catch back up. And I think actually one thing we probably want to do is uh, we probably want to expand our lab setup because I am noticing the research is going a little bit slower than I'd like. We can get some more lab speed, of course. But uh, just more labs would also help. Now you can put productivity into labs. Uh, that is something worth noting. However, uh, with that, it's definitely worth mentioning that you, you, you kind of like lose productivity, I think. Uh, so, so what I mean by that is if you put productivity in labs, uh, what will happen is it will It'll like go like, you know, it'll have the productivity bar and such and, you know, it'll work as long as you're doing the same research. But as soon as you change researches, it gets rid of it, like it resets the bar. So you can actually lose out a bit on that because, you know, if, if it's, you know, halfway done with a productivity bar and then you, you finish the research and switch, you're just going to lose all that that you that you gained right there, that half bar or whatever. So it's uh, on only two power poles. It's. It's worth doing. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's definitely worth putting them in. It's just that that is worth noting. Uh, and then, you know, you can put speeds. You can put efficiencies as well if you want. Uh, I do find, though, that a really good thing to put productivity modules in is actually the science pack uh, creators, the, the actual machines making the science packs, because that is really good, because that's the expensive part, right? That's, that's what's taking all these resources. So putting them in here is actually a really good use of, of your productivity. However... 
it will really slow them down so you may want to do it in conjunction with beacons unless you're like just super low on resources and this iron is not, not doing so good here uh let, let's see okay so this is all right we can fix this let's uh stick that guy back in there okay so this one is going to compress because remember we do have the awesome compression i'm just going to send that there to just empty out and then, so that's gonna do that. We could upgrade this to steel. How is the iron looking? I wanna make sure we do have enough iron up here. It looks like it's unloading a bit unevenly, which is pro, I should probably do, yeah. Cause, so this is like, this is why I do that circuit thing over here is sure they're not compressed belts, but every one of these is pretty much uh, even in terms of how much stuff is in here. Uh, whereas if you don't do that, you end up with situations like this, where like this chest is empty on all of them, which means that now we're only unloading with three inserters, which means you're not getting compressed belts. Uh, well, I mean, you're not with a circuit thing either, but uh, this is just kind of a more annoying because you just randomly have this chest that's going to always be pretty much empty. But I think, because this line, actually, we could probably just reroute some of these lines. Let's... Uh, Let's do this, and this may not be the most entertaining thing, but I think it's worth showing, just because you guys will encounter this in your factories, and uh, it can be worth, you know, knowing how to, like, reroute some stuff and, and what's going on here. So this guy comes down, he splits for the make everything, the little mall. Uh, looks like he's going to this, and then the rest is going over to uh, military, is what it looks like. Okay, so... But then this one, the second one, isn't splitting like anywhere up here. So it's going over to this. Okay, well this needs a ton of iron, so we probably don't want to pull off that. And then it's also splitting to go over there, and then also over to there. And this last one was just going to mining drills, which although the calculations would make this correct, I think that that's actually probably not necessary. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to not do that. We're going to make, okay, we need uh, we need stuff. Let's go ahead and make an underground and a splitter. So this guy is gonna split and this one is gonna have to kind of move over a little bit or more. Okay, so this one can split and go like that and it's fine leaving this a yellow belt because it's pretty much going to be a full yellow belt now uh, and this is of course going to not allow as much for the mining drills but it's like totally backed up at this point anyway uh, this was mostly what's lacking that should send more this way and then this one will still get the iron uh, that it wants to make these red belt and such so let's knock out this these are actually overall pretty cheap it's the rocket saw that's a bit more expensive but not too bad uh, let's grab some more stuff here just because i am running a little bit low. Some of those, some of these. All right, cool. So we've got that. Uh, I, oh, right, I was missing power poles. These are not actually inserting. After this, it may be worth doing another uh, research speed. Okay, lube's good. Now, for the rocket, we're going to need, uh, well, the silo, of course. Um, but we're also going to need low density structures, rocket fuel, and rocket control units. So these guys, I mean, we pretty much have everything we need for this. It's just, it's very intensive. And this one's actually going to be interesting because <laughs> our only plastic is absolutely nowhere near the bus. It's going all the way over to the red circuits, which is not really great. Um, <laughs> Let's see here, so plastic, because th th this needs plastic and iron or copper and steel. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not gonna be easy. And this is actually out of copper. I'd like to know, is this copper train just not keeping up enough? Hmm. So that one's going there. That one is going here, but then this one... Yeah, 
is empty because that's these lines, right? Hmm. But then these are like full. Interesting. We'll have to watch that more carefully. Okay. So how do we want to get plastic over here? Could run it by the batteries or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's not, not exactly room for that. Uh, we, I mean, we could, we'd have to move some of these undergrounds and stuff. Uh, sneaking it along here would be interesting. I'd have to come like under this and then over. May actually be a decent idea. Uh, solid fuel we have a lot of, but what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to start boxing some of it up. Uh, just because it does help to have some pre-made, you know, that rocket fuel is pretty expensive. It's, it's 10 solid fuel each. So we are going to want... So I'm, I'm essentially just going to, like, buffer this up, which typically I'm against buffers, uh, but in some cases they can be good. Mostly I'm just against, like, buffering everything everywhere. Okay, so th this is, you know, this is just an intermediate type of buffer deal. Uh, so that's going to go like that. And uh, then this... Yeah, actually... That wasn't how we had it before, but it's close enough. <laughs> okay, so he's gonna go like that. We'll have some of that boxed up. Um, oil is actually doing really well now that we got that other oil patch. It's um, really, I mean, it's pretty much backed up. So plastic, we could start routing down. Because plastic is not, not a bottleneck at all for the red circuits, in fact, it looked like, last time I looked, it looked like the bottleneck for red circuits was actually just red circuits, like the bill's not big enough. Uh, but it may become copper since it looks like th this copper train is just not, it's not doing what it needs to do. And I'm not sure, like all these are full. I think we just need, it's just not loading fast enough, I think. I think those need to be stack inserters is really what should happen there. Is, uh, yeah, those, those definitely need to be stack inserters. Okay, so... This, because it could run down next to this, but then it's going to get kind of squirrely. So let's run it. Oh, jeez. Um, this, this is not going to be... Pre oh, no. Oh, dear. Uh, well, we're going to have to do some uh, some fancy belt, belt work here. Turning on the uh, spaghetti machine again. All right. Oh. Yeah, that's in the way. <laughs> Are we going to use a red belt? Uh, just so... Like, you know, some people may be wondering why am I red belting when this is yellow belt? It's just for the distance. Um, that's certainly a viable thing to do if you just need the extra distance. Uh, because the red belts, I don't think I mentioned this, but I think it's fairly common knowledge. It does say on the thing, but uh, each level of underground does reach farther. So this is a length of five, this is a length of seven, and then the blues are a length of ten, I believe. So it does, um, you know, if you need that extra distance from the red or even from the blue sometimes, uh, then it's totally fine to mix them. Just as long as you're not you're not doing it the other direction. As long as you're not using a yellow underground on a red belt section, because that uh, that's just going to slow the whole thing down, right? Okay, so that's going to come over, come down. Yikes! Uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is not not a really great thing. Good thing this is all going to be gone at some point. Be replaced by nice organized mega base builds. Well, oh, well, that needed to go anyway, but not quite like that. Oh, dang it! Okay, so let's actually let's go get some more belt as well. Research is done. Uh, these red circuits should be catching up because we we turned off those modules. I would think they'd be. Uh, backing up at some point here, maybe. Oh, it's because they're on a belt. Oh. Well, I mean, research looks fine, right? So we could we could start the research on the rocket. Why not? I did want to do. Did I want to do a lab thing first? Actually, nah. Rocket's fine. Okay. So we have the belt. Let's bring this down. I'm not sure where we want to make the rocket things, because uh, the solid fuel is way up here. I was thinking for a second, would it be better to bring the steel and copper up there, but not really. 
Because that's like two things you have to route in the entire opposite direction. Which is not really something I'm wanting to do. We'll just run it a bit down here. Should probably check on our fuel cell uh, storage here for the nuclear. How's it doing? Got four in here. Probably should make some more. Power is um, getting close. Hmm. We do run out of fuel for our steam engines. <laughs> the nuclear is not going to support it. We probably want to uh, turn the thing on to make another reactor. And then, uh, and then expand that out. Okay, is this copper train here yet? Well, it already went and came back, but... Well, it, or it better have. <laughs> yeah, see, so there's like... There's like times here where there's just no copper, and that's not really acceptable. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something about that train. Uh, stack inserters may just fix it, as well as... If we can get some better fuel going... That would be much better. So like this is a case where undergrounding here is way better than using three undergrounds on the bus. Uh, but yeah, so we need, oh dear. Uh, yeah, I think just stack inserters is gonna hopefully fix that. Uh, but what I was gonna say, it's just like better fuel. Wow, that's close. It's like it's max reach, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, just like stack, uh, better fuel because that means the train can get back and forth quicker, right? So this guy's chugging along quite nicely. Uh, we will need the concrete. Let's go make sure we have enough concrete for this. Uh, really, I could probably use another exoskeleton. I want to be quicker. So we're going to need brick. And I think it's just grabbing ore off the belt. If I remember correctly. Yeah. So we need brick, which I just ran past, of course. Uh, okay, so another exoskeleton. Oh yeah, see that speed increase? It's glorious. So we need a thousand concrete for this rocket silo. And we're actually gonna need another, how much it is, a, a thousand, five hundred, five hundred for the, uh, for the nuclear reactor. So, I mean, we have 800 there. I think, I think there's more brick up here. Let's go grab that. Just gonna grab all of it. If you go in here, uh, and you just control click in an empty slot, it'll take everything that's in there. This iron patch is not looking great. Which, I'd really like the, uh, the other one to start taking over. <laughs> I'd really like this one, I mean, I know that this doesn't even go here. This is, this one's coming from up there, but... I'd really like this one to be drained a lot more through here because uh, it, it's going to be in the way. It's going to be in the way pretty pretty soon here. I think, I mean, the circuits don't take that much iron. I feel like, really, we probably need more of a draw for our, our, uh, our gears. And the only thing I can think of that's going to do that is belt, especially blue belt. Uh, blue belt is just insanely 10 gears plus a fast transport belt, which was five gears and then this as well which is a gear uh but then like the the undergrounds are 80 gears and this is 10 gears and maybe we should just make a ton of blue undergrounds we're gonna need them we need we will need lube but that's actually perfect because the lubricant's right here uh so we could just i mean this is making gears locally which people rightly questioned uh which i'll probably want to change or, I mean, I mean, this could just stay, I mean, we could just make, make the blue belt somewhere else and just feed a ton of gears into it. I mean, we could just set up, like, a blue belt manufacturing thing over here or down here since the lube runs uh, over here anyways and just belt the gears over. That'll eat through the iron. Uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, we are at 24 minutes, and I'm probably, I think I may end it here. Uh, we didn't do a lot physically with the factory, although I think we, uh oh, made a lot of progress, uh, with reason, hey, man, what the hell are you doing? We made a lot of progress with research, and uh, hopefully the power armor thing kind of cleared some stuff up. Uh, next episode, I think we will be a lot more productive. It's just like, he's stuck on the belt. I'm just gonna blast him to kingdom come. Nah, get wrecked. 
Okay, <laughs> that's what he gets for invading our base. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you guys still enjoyed, even though it wasn't like super exciting. Next episode, we'll be we'll start working on the rocket silo and rocket set up some blue belt production as well, and you can see our gears just instantly disappear when we do that. But uh, I think that's gonna do it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, comments, do leave down below. I am slowly catching up on the comments and doing my best to respond. But uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.